Welcome everyone today to our webinar, The New Rainmakers, Business Development's Secret Role in Accelerating Growth. I'm Amy Doles. I'm a Director of Marketing at LexisNexis. And today I'm joined by both of our presenters, Matt Thompson, who's a Client Advisor at LexisNexis, and Paul Bonner, who's a Director of Business Development at Haynes & Noon. Haynes and Boone. Welcome, Matt and Paul. How are you both today? Very well, thanks. Doing great, Amy. Wonderful. Well, before I turn the, the call over to you, Matt, I do want to go over just a few housekeeping items for all of our listeners. I want to remind everyone that all of our lines are in a listen-only mode. However, if you do have a question anytime during our presentation, please use the, fa the chat feature at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Also, at the conclusion of our webinar today, there's going to be a quick survey. Please take some time to fill that out as we really appreciate all of your feedback. Well, Matt, with no further ado, I'm going to turn the presentation over to you. Thanks, Amy. Well, good morning or good afternoon, everyone, depending on where you are, uh, and thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm a member of the uh, LexisNexis Interaction Team, and I've been part of that team for the past 15 years. And over the last several years, one of the things that I've really noticed is a, a, a quite a big increase in business development awareness, uh, attention, focus, perceived importance among the customers that I work with. Changes in the uh, economic climate have affected um, all the customers that I I've dealt with, and I think we can all relate to how th these changes have affected our business. Uh, for our law firm clients, we've seen mergers and even the dissolution of some firms, and that's created an environment that is more competitive than ever. One of the changes that I've seen with firms is that uh, historically, uh, several have been focused exclusively on marketing activities like branding websites and events, uh, things that help you get found and to help you uh, build brand awareness. Uh, but now these firms are focusing on business development activities as well. And so we're seeing where they're focusing on things like targeting, researching, proposal generation, cross-selling, competitive analysis, uh, client teams, uh, client service teams, industry teams, things like that. And the good news is that uh, for firms who have adopted this more business development oriented mindset and who have adopted processes and technologies to support these efforts, uh, we've seen some really exciting results. And so that's what we want to explore with you today. So traditionally, you know, we've thought of a rainmaker as a superstar lawyer with lots of relationships who can bring in business and uh, bring in big clients, important clients to the firm. And this has become such an archetype that the term has been adopted by other types of professional service firms and even uh, as just a generic term for someone who can make things happen. Uh, in this new environment, however, firms are finding that they need more people uh, to make it rain. And so we're seeing that there's opportunities now for other roles to enable the same type of rainmaker results, but on a, a, a much broader scale. And in fact, to implement you know, concepts such as targeting your most profitable clients for cross-selling opportunities or evaluating possible lateral hires when you want to open and grow a new office, it really requires more than just a, a single relationship builder to be successful. And, and that's really because of the, the data and analytics that are required to be effective in those types of um, more sophisticated business development activities. And so we've seen where it's become a firm-wide imperative that many of our customers to put technologies and processes in place to ensure the rain comes in systematically and from other sources other than just single rainmakers. And so although we've seen uh, you know, an increase in focus on business development, that's what everybody's talking about, the, the actual approaches and the amount of resources invested uh, vary greatly. And so on this slide, if you look to, to the left-hand side, um, I've seen firms who've rebranded their marketing departments to include business development in the department name or maybe in job titles, but most of the, the time and resources are still focused on, on traditional tactical marketing activities. Uh, on the other extreme, some firms have brought in on the right-hand side experts from other industries with extensive business development experience or uh, even sales experience. And so wherever you are on, on this spectrum, 
uh, we want to look at what you can do to eff effectively embrace these business development concepts uh, to meet your firm's revenue, growth, and client acquisition goals. And so that's why I am very excited to be talking with my co-presenter, Paul Bonner, today. Uh, Paul and I go to a lot of the same conferences, and so over the past year or so I've had the good fortune to talk about these topics with Paul over several dinners. And uh, each time I've been so impressed with Paul's ideas, um, his approaches, and, and the success that he's had with employing very sophisticated business development concepts at, at law firms. He's the uh, first person that comes to my mind whenever I think about the uh, future direction of business development and uh, best practices uh, for business development at professional services firms. And he's a big part of why Haynes & Boone has enjoyed success as a result of how they have approached business development. And with that, I'm happy to turn things over to Paul so that he can share his experiences and insight with all of us. Great. Thanks, Matt, and uh, feel free to, to jump on in. Um, we're just going to quickly uh, go through you know, some major steps here. We try to approach it and organize it in you know, a, a, you know, a, a way that we can all digest it because it is a huge topic. It is a huge area where there is room for continuous and constant improvement. Uh, all the comments that Matt said about uh, Haynes and Boone, it, I mean, very uh, flattered and complimented. And while we're put out there as an example of what we can do right and what we can do right, we are not perfect. Um, and there are things that we're, we're improving all the time. And uh, just a little bit about me, and then we'll dive into just a, some comments about the environment that we're, we're facing and, and where we're going to go. Uh, first of all, a little bit about my background, uh, kind of a unique uh, background, or at least I haven't run into many people in the industry that, that uh, have gone through the same things that I, I have. But I've uh, got an MBA, GAD, Virginia attorney, however, never practiced at an AmLaw 100 firm. Um, I have lots of funny uh, puns and jokes to counter partners' questions about that. And I never knew about uh, business development or marketing at law firms prior to entering the industry. And I entered in uh, back when the tech bubble was, was busting and my wireless network was consolidating everything into Chicago and I, and I decided to stay on the East Coast. But I was very fortunate to start off at Gray Carey, which uh, it was a California law firm that w joined and became part of DLA Piper. And that was a great way to be introduced to the industry because it was very advanced and, and sophisticated. Then I had the, the great fortune of moving to Ballard Spar, a great Philadelphia law firm, uh, been around since the late 1800s, and uh, they really jacked up business development. And then I was very fortunate just a couple years ago to join Haynes & Boone. Um, but first, the, this, the leadership, the mandate, the backing, uh, this is all something that we all crave and we all want. The thing is that the firm that you are in either has it now, is building it, uh, or, or will have it in the future. One of the things that we here at the firm have had the benefit of is that leadership is right behind us. The managing partner of the firm, I, I, I still am astounded sometimes because he it does the, the smallest things, which, yeah, I mean, it's very geeky from a BD marketing standpoint to say, but um, an interaction activity. I mean, he is an active, avid user of the, the platform. He puts in activities straight into interaction all of the time and sends them around. It, it is, I'm, I, I imagine there must be another managing partner out there somewhere that does it, but every time I see one of his activities, uh, come around, it is uh, you know a little smile on my face, regardless of, of how my day is going. But the firm uh, has continuously been focused on entrepreneurialism. It's only 41, 42 years old. It was founded in 1970, and it's it's grown to 525 attorneys in 12 offices. And it, I first learned about the firm when a colleague of mine joined it in 2005, and it was when. Haynes & Boone was really jacking up business development. It had the culture already. The attorneys were very focused on the clients, uh, very focused on working in teams. And 
in about 2005, uh, a new CMO came on board, and multiple positions were added, new technology tools were added, such as uh, you know, upgraded interaction and re-rolling it out, and Redwood and, and Advantage, uh, among many of the other tools that we have. New website, too. Um, and then in 2011, uh, that CMO left the firm, and, and then uh, for about eight months, I had the great exposure to firm management all the time, every day, just to you know, keep the ships running. When you don't have a CMO, things need to be done. And the firm management was great in that they had no hesitation about continuing on with the business development strategy and tactics that we had in place during the, the previous CMO and then uh, afterwards, and we're continuing on to this day. We had benefit of having a, sh a pretty short CMO gap. It was only eight months before um, the new one started, and the new, new uh, CMO is taking up where the last one left off and continuing with the, the firm strategy, uh, which was great. Often you, you think, oh, change. W will it be good? Will it be bad? We'll see, see what happens. But really the screening process was to keep the firm strategy and focus on business development intact and find somebody who would help us um, move it forward. And the charter and the real job descriptions that we have here at the firm, I mean, Yes, we do have <coughs> uh, business development in our title, marketing. Uh, we have a marketing operations group which focuses on events and operations, the website. But the nice thing is that we have key access to all of the, the main people, that are our BD partners, um, as well as the managing partner at any time. I can expect to have a response if I email or call any of them within within a day, if, if not less. Usually it's, it's much less, which is uh, uh, a luxury that I don't know many, many firms that do just because, you know, managing a, a $305 million uh, business, is, it takes a lot of time, and uh, there are a lot of things to balance there. But the nice thing is ha it's not just having the key access to the players. It is, you know, having the discussions, talking about where the market's going, and what your take is. And they honestly asked. I mean, m my final interviews were at Haynes & Boone prior to my joining uh, were with the BD partner as well as the uh, firm's managing partner. There are a lot of firms that that would not have happened. You would have just gone to the CMO and, and that would have been it. But uh, they did not want to hire anybody for my position with without having them go through the managing partner, which was uh, a great bonus and a huge check in my pro versus con column when I was considering moving to the firm. Uh, but without step one, moving on to steps two, three, and four, looking at the tools and, and such, it's, um, it, it's pretty hard because in order to focus on the BD initiatives and working smarter, it is you need the, the champions internally that will help push the business development uh, initiatives. Um, so a little bit about the tools of the trade and that, that we put in as step two. And we are very fortunate because, as I mentioned back in 2005, the, the firm focused on what our strategy is, what's the long-term plan. They laid out technology roadmaps. Uh, and integration roadmaps for the various systems in order to try to get everything working as best as they can. Uh, we have um, se several of the LexisNexis products, so don't be surprised to, <laughs> to hear about them. But uh, the CRM solution interaction, we have it, and we love it. We focus on, uh, excuse me, uh, pretty much everything we, we can around interaction. We have lots of client information fed in automatically from our accounting systems. We do have um, data manually put into to augment some of our client information. But we include such information about how many years, which years they've been in the top 300, what were their revenues, the lead practice groups, uh, the, um, the industries that they're in so we can slice and dice 
our contact list as, as actively as possible. But also we focus on storing as much information as possible in interaction and using it. One of the, the things that, that floored me, I, I mentioned earlier that our managing partner puts the interaction activities in by himself. But when I first arrived at Hanson Boone about two years ago, I was pleasantly surprised that for, I don't know if it was five or, or six, five or eight years prior to my joining the firm that it became standard operating procedure that activities be put in prior to reimbursements be made for business lunches or business dinners, uh, which was amazing. Uh, my previous firms, it was a rare occurrence when that was, that was put in. But the way that that was structured, it was done so in a way that it was very, pretty much there was no burden on the uh, the attorneys themselves to get the information into interaction. It was very well thought out and the, the burden, I mean, and, and it burdens is pretty much uh, exaggerating it, was placed on the secretaries there. But we track our proposals there and is an, that's another example and the key data points that we want to track. The nice thing is that it's accessible by the entire business development department, by every attorney we communicate and send updates to client teams and, and attorneys by just sending the links to interaction activities. Um, but we also use exports from interaction in order to form, uh, in order to build the reports that we often give to management. Then we'll talk more about uh, metrics and reporting later. Uh, but business intelligence is the next category. Um, this goes to, uh, let's well knowing as much about the client and the industry and what is influencing the decision makers at the client when it comes to purchasing legal services. And the business intelligence, that gets, it, it comes from so many different places. We have information in that I mentioned about uh, in interaction, but also um, we have the benefit of looking at relationship information as well as counting information through uh, our own accounting system, but also uh, the LexisNexis Redwood um, suite, where we'll be able to, where we can slice and dice our client base by different aspects of their relationship status and billings and their frequencies, and look at groups of clients and try to figure out strategies in order to address particular groups, as opposed to throwing out one size fits all kind of a, a business development initiative. Uh, the, the analytics, and that comes back to keeping our, I mean, looking at the uh, what if scenarios and the stress tests uh, and, and trying to figure out what if we move, moved one client up the uh, uh, sort of the, the chain of purchasing and make them more reliable or cross-sell into them. Um, and these are just some of the tools, and I don't want to go into too many of the tools uh, because not every firm has what we have, but also there are many firms out there that have more than we have. The key thing is to take advantage of whatever tools you have and, um, I mean, and try to add bells and whistles when you, you can. Um, one thing that we have tried to do is to integrate and sync up our different technology tools as much as we can, um, but really not just because integration sounds great and from the, the geeky BD marketing person that, uh, you know, integration sounds great, wonderful. Um, but there has to be a business purpose behind integrating to make, to having, a, why do you have the accounting system talk to interaction or into Redwood? Well, I mean, into Redwood, that, that's obvious. That's where all the information uh, it comes from on a, on a very frequent basis. But Integrating just to in be able to say that you've integrated isn't, isn't worthwhile. Um, but overall, just try to deploy whatever you can as soon as you can and empower the BD function as a firm. Uh, Matt, do you have any questions? Yeah, Paul, you know, in a few of these, um, the things that you've talked about, both on uh, step one and step two, you're talking about having support from the top and um, how you're leveraging these technologies and that you um, 
have the luxury to have the support and in some cases the, the, the tools you are struggling with some of the adoption challenges that other firms might be. One thing that I get asked a lot um, by clients when we talk about how important it is to have that support from the top is, well, what do you do when you don't? So if you're uh, if you have a marketing and business development role, but you you don't have that support from the uh, top, then what do you do? And uh, one of the things that I've seen work well, and I'd love to hear if you've got thoughts on it, Paul, is uh, to to be looking at what are the initiatives, uh, strategic initiatives and priorities at the firm that already have backing. And so most firms have some sort of strategic priorities around uh, client acquisition, you know, growth perhaps, client service, things like that, and that to align the, any of the business development activities or investments around those more strategic uh, priorities and plans that are already being supported, that that's a better way that rather than trying to make a you know, business development or a technology investment case in a vacuum. Absolutely, and it's. Uh, I mean, I, I often uh, talk to to partners about what's important for the client. What does the client want? Uh, well, don't take your security blanket. You know that that pitch book that's two inches thick to your initial lunch meeting. Uh, why don't you have lunch and 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 follow up afterwards with you know two or three pages? And they're like, hmm, why? Um, most of the time they get it, but every once in a while you get the outlier that doesn't really get it. And, and what, they're like, what do you mean? I ask the client. And go back to that over, overly utilized metaphor of going to the doctor and you're, you've got a, a sprained ankle. And, well, do you want the doctor to ask where does it hurt or you just want a cast put on your wrist? Um, but that analogy works also for our clients. I mean, the business development uh, departments that I have all worked in, all three of my firms, have been focused on being the strategic sales support for the, the lawyer sales force. Um, and, and actually, Matt, you'll remember when we were going over the presentation, my initial, initially my being uncomfortable with, you know, BD as a rainmaker just because we are the strategic sales force. And um, we, we took a, a larger definition of that for the, this presentation, which um, I, I think is great and, and gets people thinking. But you do need the, to have the visions and the understanding of what is important for the firm because, I, I mean, it, every one of us works for a business. I, I mentioned, I mean, you know, last year this firm, it's, it's all public damn law figures, um, you know, $305 million in gross revenue. That's a real business. Um, there are plenty of us on the phone who work for much smaller law firms, but, you know, it's a business. The, the job is to get paid and to make our clients happy, and those clients are the partnership, the shareholders that we work with and work for. And for you to try to be all things to all people in this, with the same degree and and, and ignore the vision or the initiatives that are going on by the firm is a disservice to yourself and also to, to your employer. Uh, obviously, it's difficult with the fact that we have so many, quote, bosses uh, working for a partnership, but you, you need to, to be in line and prioritize what you are proposing on the BD side, be it technology tools, programs, initiatives, um, you know, just just time, hours that your your team spends with what senior management and what the partnership is looking for. And when you're constructing your business cases in order to get the new version of Interaction or Redwood or some other technology tool, yeah, you need to show and, and explain why it's going to be good for segmenting your client data or your client base and designing profile or specific business development strategies and programs for those different groups of clients and, and and how you'll be meeting and talking to the clients more directly as opposed to just being oh look we're a big great law firm and come to us and we'll get we'll get you taken care of um, at one additional aspect to knowing what the firm vision is is also understanding what your fellow um, admin departments are doing. Uh, a big interplay between 
every all the technology tools that we all have and that we all wish we would would be able to get, and I do have a, a shopping list myself, um, is the information technology, the IS, you know, the tech department. Um, they're busy, uh, and you have to. That's it's one very good example of understanding what's on their agenda and how much time and effort they can help. I mean, it might be easy to upgrade to the next platform of X, but you know, if they're rolling out the new Windows uh, and, and Word desktop to the entire firm, they, they don't even want to hear that you know, we got another project. Oh, it's really easy. It won't take you much time. But um, um, you, uh, how much time? They, they don't even want to talk about something that's easy to do, do let alone something complex to do. Um, it, for many firms, the, their technology budgets are, are smaller. I mean, we all, uh, during the Great Recession, uh, are trying to do more with less. BD and marketing groups, um, whether it's one or two people or um, a larger one, you know, have had their budgets and or head cut um, cut. Some firms have recovered uh, and, and invested more there, but IT is the same way. Um, with, I mean, the the ILTA 2011 survey uh, had uh, the finding that most firm technology spending is still considerably down from the pre-economic downturn figures. So, um, there you have to understand the the resource constraints within your firm too. Um, but when you get to uh, rolling out a program or a technology, uh, I mean, my rule is roll out, reinforce, and repeat. And the key thing here is to, to remember the human element, to, to remember what the clients are, what the partners um, will, will get out of it. They need to be delivered value in order to figure out what the clients are talking or, or what the clients are asking for and needing in order to try to move up the chain to be a, tr a true trusted advisor. You can't just roll out and, and focus on the rollout. But, um, it, it's a huge pitfall that a lot of us fa have fallen into and will continue to you know, probably fall into is that rolling out cannot be a goal. The ultimate business case that helped you with that program or technology needs to be the guiding force. And when the technology process workflow and people get aligned, that's where the magic happens. That's where you get the conversation elevated, where you are bringing additional value to your partner's business development efforts and targeting clients in ways that really speak to the clients. And provide insight into what they're really facing as opposed to, you've got 10,000 employees, we have a labor group, let's, let's tell you how, how good we are here. Um, but it is uh, the real value. And once you get value, that's where you get the buy-in. Um, often we hear about, you know, focus on the low-hanging hanging fruit, and often that, that a lot of people think of that as the um, quick, easy sale, but really it needs to be, just don't think about the quick, easy ones, just think about the receptive people. And if you can find uh, folks within firm management that will back and adopt and embrace a, a complex business development effort, I go with that. That's where the fun really happens. Um, I'm ready for the next slide, Matt. Um, Information. Uh, the information really is, is key in figuring out how to be a trusted advisor. Without that, you're just, be, you're just guessing. Uh, and, and information, mm, I mean, it can be, comes from internal and external um, sources, from accounting, from interaction, the number of relationships, uh, contacts that you've had, uh, whether it's you know inviting someone into an event or you know the really valuable face-to-face -face conversations that are that are happen, but also the external sources. Uh, I mean, what's going on in the industry? Whether it's a Wall Street analyst report uh, that you can get online or you, an Advantage report um, from the that that system. Getting it is 
will help provide the context to ask the intelligence questions. Again, we're trying to figure out that the ankle hurts, not that the wrist is broken. Um, and having that accessible throughout the firm or to as many people is, is definitely important. Um, we have, I, I've been lucky that all my firms, my um, jobs have had full access to the entire firm billing system, um, either directly into the billing system uh, whew, or through uh, intranets or through systems such as Redwood. And for example, I've been able to look at, on the fly, um, all in billing information on the matter level, on the working or supervising level of, for each attorney, but also uh, you know, the historical billings of clients, the trends, but also we're fortunate enough, or I'm, I've been fortunate enough to have access into data through things such as Redwood that are incompatible and that we actually cannot use. One thing that we have that, and it's sort of a, I should have mentioned it earlier, it goes to the Haynes and Boo culture, is that we do not have origination credit. Uh, the, it, which is uh, the, the first of my three. Uh, obviously there, there are other metrics that go into it, but the fight for origination doesn't exist here. The, the teamwork approach uh, that was founded by um, the, the two firm founders uh, 40 years, definitely or is pervasive throughout the firm. Um, so having information spread throughout is, is important. One thing that a lot of firms that uh, have been focusing on or there's been a lot of buzz in the marketplace about is, is competitive intelligence and the strategic focus of that. And I mean, competitive intelligence uh, there's, there's some firms that have specific professionals with that in their title. Not very many. Um, it, it, based here, in, I'm based in Washington, D.C., so when this comes up, a lot of times, you know, you hear about the CI person who has a CIA background or, or, or something, but um, you don't need that. And for most firms, it really falls to the marketing and business development managers and directors to focus on competitive intelligence and figuring out as, as much information and knowledge. It's not just pulling data and reams of, of, of binders about what you can do, but um, trying to, to pull information that becomes knowledge and turn it into actionable items and, and actionable in intelligence. The, uh, the, the thing is trying to find out everything that um, the attorney would need to know for their meeting um, to really impress the client. It's, and again, it's not the, the initial conversation, it's the raising it so you're, you're a trusted advisor, so you're asking, or so your attorney's questions, your attorney's questions are asking the clients and, and prospective clients how they feel about issue X, Y that they've been seeing in the industry. Um, with all this, the, the key, it, the thing that you need to come back to occasionally is to, to set some key performance indicators and, and measure what's really important. This will go back to your firm culture, but also the vision and what is important by management uh, in order to try to stay focused on the, the business objectives. We all have the, the, the danger that, you know, you know, it's one of the reasons why I, I choose business development instead of practicing law is that I don't know what my day is every day. I come in, it's different. That's great. I, it, it, it excites me. However, it also is very dangerous because a, a partner is going out in five minutes, they need, they need a quick pitch book, or there's some immediate need that distracts you from the major business development initiatives that your firm is, is undertaking, whether it's putting together a focused roundtable or an, an industry event or um, really working on CI or on cl client teams. Um, you really need to stay focused and revisit the performance indicators that you select um, to measure those, those key initiatives that will hopefully push your firm's vision um, ahead. One question I get a lot is ROI. How do we measure it? How do we figure out how many dollars that we, we, we help bring in the door? Well, the, the key there is help. Um, the, the, the wild card is, as we all know, 
our sales force and our product are the same thing. So we could literally split the business development and marketing at them and, um, and, and our sales force, the attorneys, who knows what's going to happen. There, it could click. There could be a relationship. It, you, you never know what's going to happen. So um, in order to figure out the, the ROI, you need to take a broad definition and broad viewpoint of ROI and what it is. And that will help you set your key performance indicators. Um, the first thing, you, you can try to focus on money and how much you're helping bring in, how many contacts, but really focus on what you can measure um, and what is important and understandable for, for management and how what you measure is reinforcing your business development priorities at your firm. Um, yeah, good. So, so Paul, can you talk through some of um, maybe a bit more tactically so of some different cases? You know, you talk about you don't know what your day is going to be like, and that you get pulled into these um, situations where you need to provide data. What's the, what is your role in, in trying to su support the attorneys on these particular issues? What are they looking for, and how are you able to? Uh, help them in, in when it's fast. So I, I know you've got lots of good tools at your disposal, but you know if you're in a situation where you've got to uh, provide information quickly, are there any uh, tricks of the trade that you can uh, share for how you are able to be uh, very responsive? Yeah, I mean we we first of all it's you know sharing knowledge and having accessible by the firm yes that's the starting point and i'm you know no pollyanna i, I know that attorneys even though they have access at you know two three percent maybe will access it directly so they will be coming to business development and marketing which is fine which is okay it's actually great because they involve us in the process and we get to ask them you know the key business development questions uh, to help them stay regimented in the process. They're, they're coming, they're meeting for, for lunch in an hour. Well, who are you meeting? Do you know anything about, about their background? Okay, no. Let's look in interaction. I mean, that's where we keep our relationship information. Let's see who knows whom, what kind of activity, business development activities we've had with that individual, but also with other people at the company. We, as I mentioned before, track our proposals interaction. So everyone comes up when you search the individual or the company or any of the attorneys that are on it. Knowing that, um, looking at the IQ score that we have, which is, uh, for, for people who don't have it, it it's ERM. It's, you know, scale one to five, five being the best, who has the best relationship, and it's, it's done by network traffic, number of emails, phone calls made um, back and forth but over, the firm net, over the law firm's network there. That helps us narrow in on, let's say, I'm having lunch with Matt. Who is this guy? Who at, the, who at my firm knows them? Well, they're 15 people. I have an hour before I leave. Out of those 15 people, who do I start calling? Do I call the relationship partner? Well, we, we sometimes look at that. Or do we look at the IQ score? Or who's had the most recent activity? It's more apt going to be the who had the most recent activity, and who has the highest relationship score. Um, you can easily knock out a couple of those um, calls pro and emails prior to, to rushing out the door. Uh, second thing is, what kind of client relationship do we have? For checking, checking out who has it, you know, go, going to the portal, uh, that's our intranet, and you know, just quick yes, no. I mean, we have that information and interaction too, so we have multiple ways to access this. Um, and then, you know, what are, what are the billings? Are the billings going up, going down? We, you know, take a, can take a snapshot through straight through the accounting system, but our preference is to go through um, and look at Redwood and the trends analysis module, which we have, um, and, and that gives us a, a nice snapshot. And the thing is we have that regimented into, you know, A, B, C, D. And, you know, if you, don't, if you have 40 minutes, well, you don't get to D. Um, but we have um, those major steps, and, and obviously, in addition to the relationship, a quick background report on the company so you know what generally they do. So you, you know, make sure that you ask a question about the mining industry 
when you're talking to a mining client as opposed to um, you know a, a mining ish industry. Um, bad play on words. I'm thinking about the you know the French clowns and you know white white makeup and stuck in a box. Um, and we have standard quick turnaround uh, client profiles that or company profiles that we usually. The starting point is to pull them out of interaction. Um, our competitive and intelligence focus, uh, we, we have multiple predefined reports going from the quick, you know, we got to turn around in five, ten minutes for someone who's walking out the door to a hundred plus page uh, summary of a client uh, that we are proposing for a client team. And do they uh, typically, uh, when you're getting these requests, are they, um, I guess, do they know specifically what they're looking for? Are, they, are the questions, I've got a meeting coming up and I want to prepare, or I'm looking for this very specific data? It, it varies. The more advanced business developers in the firm um, know what they, they want, and, and that's often a, a result of having the department being within the firm and, and having these for multiple years. So it's been a working relationship where we've worked to figure out what is most helpful to the, the average partner or the average rainmaking partner um, versus just trying to give them a, a report that you know, someone off the street would be like, oh, that's a great research report. But um, we've revisited that over time and, and make sure that what we're providing in these various predefined reports are what are useful to the attorneys. I, I, some of the reports take 50 hours to do, and if there is a 10-hour part of that report that is not being used by the partners, we'll revisit. We'll ask why. Can we reformat it? Can we? Is it just? I mean, is it formatting? Is it you know some tweak that we can do to make it worthwhile? But also the basic question: Is it even worthwhile? Like why, if it's not being used, and if formatting and you know presentation isn't the answer? If that information is not useful, then we, we won't use that and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll move there. But there are also a lot of partners who do not necessarily know what they are and you have to, I mean, the, uh, several people, one, one of my uh, pr uh, leading BDMs on my, on my current team, uh, you know, give the attorney what they want and what they ask for, but then also give them what they need uh, and try to coach them up the value chain uh, by providing them additional information. If they want to know, uh, you know, who at the firm knows this person, okay, great, that's a who knows room report. Um, but maybe then you add on and provide, and you, you break out either in a summary report or, or uh, in your email the uh, IQ score and who has the, the biggest relationship and focus on the value of the information. Uh, I've seen a lot in early in my career fell into the pitfall of saying, oh, well, here's a who knows who report, or you know, highlighting interaction and be like, oh, here, here here's a report from interaction. Uh, that's fine, but um, we, we now flip it around and augment that uh, transmission of the report of here are the people with the tightest relationship according to like network traffic, that we, and it's from interaction, um, and provide the value and the information and the knowledge uh, and focus on that and the value as opposed to look at this cool, fancy, pretty report we got out of interaction, which, I mean, it is a cool, pretty, fancy report out of interaction, but it, it, that's not the selling point. It's what that is going to help with the firm's um, knowledge. Let's see. Um, and, and one of the proof points of it, it, whether you're, you're doing your job right and I mean, obviously, you know, feedback on a regular basis. But you know, often in law firm environments, the great job um, doesn't come but but once a year, if that, when you're getting your annual review. But you will know that you're doing a good job when you have a seat at the table for BD, when they, you're being included in conversations uh, about setting business development strategy early on, about the vision of of how we can do something better. But also, um, if you, you know, get into the client meetings, the prep meetings, the dress rehearsals for your RFP interview or for your, just your, your lunch. I mean, you can get into a coaching situation with partners going out to just a simple lunch meeting about what are they going to ask, 
and, and help keep them focused. I mean, if you are working a, a prospective client and trying to get um, immigration work or something, and, and you have a relationship, great. But I mean, trying to figure out the, the business and how they purchase the immigration legal services, who makes that purchase, why, who do they currently use, um, those and other questions you need to stay focused on and, and coaching the attorneys in prep meetings is a key way in order to keep them focused long term. And if you're in the multiple rounds of those meetings, you can ask and bring them back to, well, did, you, did we ever find out who makes that legal decision or who's currently doing the work? Oh, and what's that relationship? Um, can we ever get in there? Um, the second thing is the, just staying focused on the client. Uh, obviously, our client is, uh, are, are the attorneys, and part of it is to deliver what they, what they ask for, but also by delivering what they need, you know, the, going the extra step, adding more value, um, will go the furthest, and it, it's it's two phase. I mean, one is or or two aspects of that is one keeping your attorney client happy, but by doing that and focusing on their satisfaction of of the strategic sales support that you provide, or at least um, the roles that that I've been in, um, will be key. And to do that, it is trying to keep them focused on the external client, the paying client for the legal services outside the firm. Um, let's see, uh, working the easy op opportunities, talked about that already, and, and, and easy isn't, again, you know, just a, an easy project. It, it is the, the, the supporters of the business development, and again, trying to find the folks who support in firm management and, and the really complex business development efforts, I think, will be the situations that will lead to the most satisfying uh, results for you. Um, the new systems, new solutions and processes, this is part of the key, the key performance metrics. And if you roll, roll out processes and, and programs and technology and focus on the value and the business case behind it and stay aligned with your firm's vision and priorities, um, it will let you um, Keep your eye looking forward, and it's always healthy to ask, you know, what are the new systems out there to stay current on the technology trends in the industry, and what can be done to help make your job more efficient, and how you can pull more information together and pull it into knowledge and deliver it to your attorney clients um, faster. Uh, we're continuously looking at processes and, pr and procedures, whether it's um, the steps that go into a, a client briefing report for the you know the five minute turnaround or, or the hour uh, mentioned that, but I mean even aspects outside of sort of the targeting and, and business development uh, and more into marketing communications or just the marketing operations it, that's obviously a big part of our job. But you know, look at the alerts process. Look at your 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 procedures for doing those or for your your events. Um, a couple of the biggest time savers that I have found, uh, and, and time, but also by saving time, really raises how much you can spend, how, or lets you divert the time that you save into higher level business development activities. Um, proposal generators, having those together, and help, I mean, they let you pull together a quick pitch packet on demand, it's tailored. Um, and when I say tailored, obviously, um, if it's a quick turnaround, you're not doing a, a quick, you know, a full executive summary talking about the value and stuff. But when I say tailored, it's the two or three pages of, of practice groups that the, the prospect it values as well as some bios, um, as opposed to a 15-page glossy brochure, which is out of date even before it's printed and um, and often just thrown aside uh, when it gets to the client's desk. Um, and then uh, clean and organized data. I mentioned interaction. I don't even want to count. If I had a nickel for every time I mentioned interaction on this call, I probably um, you know, could go by lunch. But um, the clean and organized data from interaction, from 
your billing system, understanding the, the loopholes or the, or, or the limitations of that information is key. I um, am very um, fortunate to have the, the interaction database, the contacts here to be among the, the cleanest of the firms that I've worked in and also that I have uh, been exposed to just in conversations with my peers at other, other law firms, which is great. It's, I have not had a conversation with a partner about, oh, that the, the data is wrong because there are duplicates in the system once while at Hans & Boone, which is uh, a great luxury. But being able to have that data organized and clean and in one source, again, we centralize it in one place, our RFPs and, and pitches um, are, are just in interaction. Um, I see one question about uh, whether we, we track it in, in opportunities, and if you can believe it, um, we don't. Uh, we we, we do never rolled out opportunities here at the firm because we started a business process that tracked the key performance indicators that we needed for our proposals in, um, in, in normal activities, and we established a workflow around it where it, it works great, the information is accessible, um, and that it is taking care of our current need. Um, we're evaluating continuously, going back to evaluate whether we're going to move forward um, with that. But again, it's taking the your situation and your business needs and figuring out what technology tools best suit your your um, your needs there. Um, and then uh, going back to um, integration, and I just want to reemphasize. The, the potential pitfall, and, and please avoid it, of integrating just for integration purposes um, and make sure that you have a business case because of the time that it takes for you to get the information linked up, the time that it takes you uh, or someone in your group to, to manage it, uh, as well as you know, the final straw or, or factor of, of getting IT to actually do the integration and, and then upgrade it in the future is all um, uh, they, they all come together and they're really um, quite the ordeal. I think that's a great point, Paul. And, and when we're talking about uh, the general statement of deploying new systems and solutions, a lot of the times with the existing technology that you have, you can uh, roll out different applications for the technology. The, technology is, te the technology is just there to support and solve business problems. And so if there's not a real reason for uh, a real problem you're solving, then the technology I isn't important. And so I think a lot of times there's existing technology that firms have that they're not uh, getting the most value out of and, and really re-looking at what, what you have, what problems do we have that this could uh, help enable a solution for is, is a better approach than just looking at trying to buy something new. Right. And, and, um, and, and I mean, do not be scared of rolling out, of rolling out a new technology. I, I mentioned that our, our workflow, our business needs were met by tracking RFPs and, and pitches and using normal activities and interaction. Well, there were other factors um, for us to continue that way. It was one, meeting our needs, tracking the key performance indicators that, that we needed at the time, but also the environmental factors of I IT when we were ready to roll out opportunities, um, we had some bandwidth constra constraints. IT has a lot of, of key projects. I mean, everyone knows that one of your, your best friends at, at the firm can be the, the IT person, whether it's uh, you know, the in-house staff or if you're a smaller firm and, and you have an IT consultant um, under contract. But you, you need to do that. And, and with that said, um, when the stars align, when we have a business need and we line, can line up all the resources, um, we're aggressive. Uh, we're very fortunate to have been um, launch site for the, the latest version of the Redwood Analysis Suite, which uh, was a great treat for me because I had used the, the old standalone application at my previous firm, which uh, w it, that was awesome to start with. but. Um, uh, there, there were some limitations, such as the databases were in the main office, and I was in a branch office, so the, the, the turnaround time and the um, performance was uh, a little bit less. Um, our, by being a, a launch for the new version of Redwood, it's, I mean, it let us slice and dice our client um, database in, in ways that uh, we never could before, and 
when we could, and when we do that, it's at speed and by ourselves. Um, all of my BDMs, the the team of eight within the firm that I have, um, all have it on their desktops or sorry, on their laptops, and they take their laptops to meetings, uh, to targeting meetings, and and can slice and dice on on the fly without having to go to accounting. Um, great. And that's all I have. Can we have some questions? Absolutely. Yeah, Amy, can we open uh, it up to questions? Yeah, absolutely. I'll remind everybody that to ask a question, please use the chat feature, which is in the bottom left-hand corner. And we actually, with sake of time, I'll try to get a couple of the questions in that Matt and Paul have been asked throughout the presentation. And one, both of you could probably answer this one and love your insight. Someone is asking the question if you're seeing any trends in the industry as to whether BDM is personally originates the work and clients for the firm. Have you seen any trending in that, Paul or Matt? I've seen a couple of fir a handful of firms that have tried that and tried to roll out, uh, you know, the account executive accounting firm model, um, and it it, it had. I, it obviously has not gained enough traction to spread throughout the industry. Um, one thing to remember is that uh, the accounting firms, the, the big ones that we all hear about, and you know, we all hear that they're so many years ahead of us, um, and they are in, in some ways, but in some ways uh, I think they're, we're, we're, we're pretty darn competitive, is that the account executives in, in many of the professional services firms do start, they go out for business and they do look and, you know, help pull in clients, uh, prospective clients and, and set up meetings, but they are often t focused on the uh, the lower level work, the, mo the more commodity work, the true high-end, sophisticated uh, accounting professional services that um, are, are still sold by partners. Uh, the partners do a tremendous amount of effort in creating that business to there. So it's not, you have to understand the, the sort of the, the, the dual business development um, streams at um, other professional services firms. Wonderful. And, and Paul, you, you talked all throughout the presentation about what you're doing at Haynes and Boone's, and some of the people on the line don't really have that BD focus yet. So the question um, arose that if you were at a firm that doesn't have a business development focus, you know, what type of suggestions would, would you give um, the individual or the firm of what they would need to do to get started? Um, well, well, that sounds great. Um, be happy to, to talk about that a little bit. The one thing is it, if you're, I mean, it, it's very superficial, but Title don't don't care what you're called if you're business development or marketing. My job uh, currently is a director of business development. My job before was was pretty much the same thing, but I was a marketing director. Uh, so I ignore that. But um, when it comes to starting to grow the business development um, efforts at your firm more, first take a quick snapshot of the firm's priorities and the vision and the initiatives. Do you have insight into those? Do you understand them? Do you need to find out more information about them? You might, un you might know what they're, they are doing, what's important, uh, whether it's growing uh, the New York office or you know, adding more people in San Antonio or, or you know, Omaha or, or something, but, and then try to figure out how you can help support that. Again, it's going back to the business case um, the justification, the, the the reasoning to that you'll go to that you can go to firm management with about how you can help, and often it's um, you know giving a little of the the milk away. Um, we often coach our, our our attorneys to talk about the situation the, pers the pr prospective client faces and some of their thoughts on how to address a litigation or uh, you know a corporate restructuring or, or something. I, I mean, it, it's very analogous. You need to make the discussion be about how your participation can add value. And it's not just the, oh, I can do this because of blah, blah, blah. It is how the situation can be improved, can be streamlined, and how you can be um, providing support and, and going back to sort of my mantra, this providing the strategic sales support to the partners so they can be uh, effective and efficient more so than ever uh, in their business development efforts. I don't know if that's enough detail. 
Absolutely, and I, and I will preface since we are definitely at the top of the hour that if there, there are a couple questions that we haven't had a chance to, to get to that, that we'll definitely respond back to people. And, and I want to thank you, um, Paul, as well as Matt, for presenting on our call today. And both of their contact information is located up on the screen right now. Please know that we will be sending out the playback um, as well as some additional materials following the call today. Paul and Matt, thank you so much for your time today. And I'm going to conclude this webinar and want to thank everybody for attending. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Please stand by.